Szanowni Państwo, z małym opóźnieniem, ale zaczynamy. Za to mamy wyjątkowego gościa, który przyjechał do nas aż z, ze Słowenii. Pani Sylwia Spechar. Oh, bardzo ciężkie do wymówienia. Natomiast temat, który pani poruszy, pani jest w ogóle pasjon jest biologiem z wykształcenia, jest pasjonatką naturalnej medycyny, brała udział w licznych kursach, również z zakresu ajurwedy. Jej wiedza na temat naturalnych metod leczenia jest naprawdę ogromna. Podzieli się dzisiaj z Państwem. Jest też współzałożycielką firmy HempTouch, która ma stoisko na naszej hali. 407, także jeżeli byście chcieli porozmawiać z panią Sylwią jeszcze na ten temat, macie też możliwość. A teraz oddaję już głos naszej specjalistce. Thank you. Dobry dan. Hello. My name is Sylvia Specher. Uh, I come from company HempTouch uh, and I'm very glad to be here and represent to you one of the very prosperous and big field, uh, big industry field. It's cosmetic and also hemp together. Uh, I work in HempTouch as a head of development and I'm also a co-founder there. And also like Poland, Slovenia is also very green, sustainable, we care about nature and we're still very primal to uh, ag agriculture and everything that is connected to herbs. And HemTouch company is a team of 10 people. In this picture, you can see Marco and Yerne also. Marco is a other co-founder and CEO for the company, and Yerne provides us hemp field for our cold press hemp oil. And basically, most of the things are local, so locally uh, grown and locally produced. A little bit more you can see on the next video. So this is a very short summary of what we do. And now I will um, guide you through the presentation. First, I will explain it, um, how uh, a little bit more about beauty industry, what in, uh, how big field this is, which, who are the consumers and customers in the future of beauty segment, uh, what are the future trends in beauty industry, and then also cannabis, how um, influenced this industry, what are the effects on the skin, the clinical study we made, and at the end I will explain a bit more about legal issues around cannabis in skincare and cosmetics. So beauty industry is large, huge, and it's one of the leading industries among others. It consists of color cosmetic, hair, nails, skin care, men cosmetics separately targeted. Um, then there is also a lot of strategy, strategic uh, marketing, uh, advertising, because beauty segment is all about brand and marketing. Then consumer insights, um, personal care, fragrances, retail, packaging, 
So these are all areas where um, one can specialize in. And in future three to five years, it will, there are also, the, there is developing and there will be uh, new types of beauty consumers. The f seven of them uh, in general. The one is local activists. That means consumer who care about sustainability, um, local sourcing, so cannabis is very fitting here, like ca it, hemp can be grown all over the world. It, you don't need to buy it from, East, uh, from Asia or specific country. It's sustainable. And also these consumers are very keen to vegan, cruelty-free, trade fair, and they read and know about declaration on packaging. They don't skip anything. So they are not, uh, they don't care about shiny looks and beautiful people on a um, magazine. And then there is empathic luxuries. These are segment of people who has a lot of money but they want product, which is something more than just an um, expensive product, but it's also um, for a highest goal. Like if I buy a cream for 100 euros, I want to know if some of this money goes to charity or if this money will provide more sa safe jobs. Um, so it's, just, it's not just about showing, showing off, but they want to know where this money will go. So to philanthropic causes, uh, they are keen to fa fair trade channels. So they are very, they want to know where this product is made, did any child labor or animal were involved in production. Like for example, I recently get to know that um, for coconut oil, in some parts of Asia, they use monkeys to um, collect coconuts and they are on chains and then they are providing the ingredients. And then there is a mainstream Mavericks. They're a lot more about the, this edgy, controversial, um, they like to, to buy and see and they're like provocative and sarcastic and also this is a lot more cannabis. People still think it's for uh, drug dealers and junkies and it's uh, so not just clean and they like things um, un, like unretouched photo, they don't like um, Photoshop girls on cover because they know it's fake. So they are against fake and honesty is their policy and but still they, they want to provoke with the image. And they're still um, eco-friendly, like cannabis is eco if there is um, uh, yeah, if farmers follow all the rules which uh, we expect of them. And they are um, cost-effective alternatives, so they don't care that much about expensive luxury things, but more uh, what can I get? F the balance between the price and quality is important to them. And tech optimists, they are the one who are very um, computer skills, they are interested in artificial intelligence, which will be the next thing in cosmetics. So it's all over now with the smartphones when they show you um, all the ads um, based on your Google search and other stuff. So and they are also very keen to new technologies and devices, um, especially in cosmetic field, there are devices who can make you personalized cream just for you, just for your needs. 
so smart packaging. Um, as cannabis is so widely can be used, um, there are companies who are working um, on packaging with um, hemp fiber, which can be biodegradable and also sustainable and um, influenced with um, this high-tech technology. So it's a field that can be very widely um, explored. And then there is... Then there are cautionists. They are very sensitive people uh, with a lot of allergies. They have breakups on every perfume, essential oils. They read labels. Um, they need special formulation care. So um, they respect health, environment, and clean formula. They don't care about perfume. Uh, or the smell, they just want healthy skin. And no chemicals like parabens and packaging that it's making product toxic. So basically allergy-free formulation because this dermatitis and sensitivity is growing every year. A lot more people are because of the the toxified, because of toxic uh, food and environment and water, uh, is it's a skin response. And yeah, beauty segment focuses on men also, but not on uh, just like, uh, not metrosexual or someone like drag queen can wear makeup, but it's regular men who want to be uh, who want to be like, um, which is the English term, like gentlemen uh, that are um, having nice skin, they use skin care products, they use some kind of makeup. This is uh, more, it's like, it's in between. Yeah, it's in between. They, the cosmetic company wants to uh, say to, other men who didn't use as much cosmetic uh, they want, that they should care about their looks more, like taking care of their hair or um, night cream, day cream, anti-wrinkle. Uh, so, uh, yeah, especially young men and teens like to um, experiment. And then there are four fastest growing trends in cosmetic. So it, everyone is specific, different, and you cannot make a product which, is, which can fit in all, it's difficult. So one is instant fix. Even though cosmetic uh, cannot say it's healing or it do effect on uh, health or body, it can just beautify or nourishes or regenerates. People want in instant fix, with, like no wrinkles, a fresh look. This is more on skin uh, care segment. And then the one is the doll look. This is for makeup segment when girls want to be seen as a 16 years old without a flaw, but it's full lips, um, color cosmetics, um, big eyes, no acne, no, um, so this makeup, it, it's a trend from Asia, like Korea, South Korea is the leading one, and still, growing strong on this doll look. Then is the skin care from the earth. Here comes the natural cosmetic, organic cosmetic, all ingredients that come from, from the field and that are not processed too much. And the last one is customization and personalization. Everybody wants to be something special. So uh, this artificial intelligence can collect all the data of users and think what 
this person might like and suggest to them. And also then there is a variety of one product that can be, that can satisfy indivi individually more than a mass crowd. And how hemp can fit in all that? And what are the possibilities in cosmetics and skincare? Basically, we can use the whole plant from the top to the roots. Seeds, if they're cold press, we can get uh, rich omega-3, 6, 9 uh, essential fatty acids and oil that can nourish the skin, moisturize and have a little bit anti-age effect. With uh, different extraction methods, we can have different materials. So if you have CO2 extraction or oil extraction or alcohol extraction, and also if you have just leaf ex extract or also leaf and stock, it's different ingredients because uh, stock, stock is uh, rich in terpenes. Terpenes are plant natural immune system. So they can fight bacteria, viruses, and also have similar effect on our skin and body. With the um, processing of the roots, we can have um, effect on pain, arthritis, but they made a study with um, extraction with alcohol. So again, um, CBDs and cannabinoids are easily soluble in uh, fat and uh, alcohol and under pressure, but uh, with new newer technology also can be done as a water soluble. You probably know a lot about hemp here, so I won't get to the too much details. Just to focus on ingredients that can that are applying to uh, skincare. So cannabinoids, CBD, CBG, THC, they have an uh, effect on our body and our skin, like a cell communication, and they have calming effect. Then amino acids have uh, has effect on moisturizing the skin, anti-aging effect. Terpenes has effect on, like I said, uh, it's protecting against outside environment, antibacterial, antivirus, fatty acids in um, hemp extracts are good for anti-aging effect, moisturizing. And that, so it's like 500 uh, ingredient, uh, components in hemp extraction. So you can play with different kind of uh, in, uh, substances, but depends on the how you provide the material. So I don't know if this is uh, something I can explain. So it's the same philosophy with skin as body. So if we have um, receptors for phytocannabinoids in our organ system, central central nervous system, peripheral nervous system for uh, cannabinoids like CBD, THC, and CBN. We have also these receptors in our skin. CB1 and CB2 receptors, uh, they are placed in epidermis. They're both placed in epidermis, in uh, immune cells, in sweat glands, and they, are, they have effect on inflammation. So they can lower down um, inflammation problems on skin, inflammatory problems. Then we have CB1 receptors in sensory nerves. That's why um, 
applying cannabinoids can have effect that um, skin is less itchy, less painful. It's also in hair follicle CB1 receptor. And CB2 receptor is located in sebus gland. That means has effect on sebus production. So skin is less greasy. That means uh, the production of acne are less possible. But still, these problems are, connect are connected to our organs. So in puberty, you cannot just fix acne with um, skin care. You need to also take care of your diet. And a lot of um, successful skin problem stories are connected with uh, taking cannabinoids orally also. So eating under the tongue and other area where the problem is near located. Yeah. So in summary, skin loves cannabis. And to make sure, we made clinical study in University of Modena in the Department for Second Opinion with um, our CBD enriched ointment. So how, what effect does it have on skin problems? So the method was uh, we had five patients with psoriasis, five with atopic dermatitis, and 10 with the resulting outcome scars. The result was that there is no um, negative side effect of taking the ointment uh, for three months, twice a day. There were no irritant or allergic reaction and it significantly improved the quality of skin. So for example, here is a picture of the first one is sunspots and the second one is scar after cyst removal surgery. And as picture showed in different light, there are improvement of the skin. Also with psoriasis, psoriatic skin, there is less swelling and redness. But with psoriasis, it's also advisable to take um, the cannabinoids, like not just CBD, but uh, full spectrum cannabinoids uh, orally because it's autoimmune and it affects uh, immune organs. And also one uh, example of urticaria, that's a, like a skin rash caused by allergy and sensitive skin. So uh, one, our customer who was trying a skin enriched um, balm and CBD raisin under the tongue, so both therapy inside and outside, she got rid of uh, urticaria. So it's very, we were very happy that we can help that girl. And as you know, issues in cannabis world and restrictions are ongoing. Still, there is no um, common, um, the same law also in uh, European region, not to mention East and West continents. That's why I just put some European legislation on things that are already briefly put together on, um, how to say, not national, but European level. So for food, cannabidiol currently is a novel food catalog, in novel food catalog. It needs to be done um, safety assessment and uh, below THC below 0 0.2 and the CBD level the same as naturally pre uh, presented in cannabis leaves. 
and as concern to cosmetic. Cannabis sativa flower extract is recognized as emollient and skin conditioning. Cannabis sativa flower, leaf, and steam extract is uh, recognized as antioxidant, antiseboraic, skin conditioning, and skin protecting. So we have the last one, so the extracts from flowers, steam, and leaves in our products that are having therapeutic effect, also in waterless formula and with water formula. Cannabidiol itself is also recognized as antioxidant, antiseboraic, as skin conditioning and skin protecting, but we got with our, with our customers better effect if there is a full spectrum of cannabinoids, not just CBD. So entourage effect is more effective and natural extract better than synthetic one. So the next one is cannabis sativa seed oil, recognized as emollient and skin conditioning. And then there is also a lot more cannabis ingredients, but they are more technically processed and used as emulsifiers. We use cold press hemp oils in our gentle skin balm, shampoo, and lip balm formula made for sensitive skin who needs nurturing and protection. And what's the future outlook in cannabinoids? Definitely scientists need to research effect of other cannabinoids as also not just THC, CBD and CBG, but there, is also, there are numerous potentials here. And terpenes. Terpenes in cannabis are the same as found in calendula, in sage, mint, lavender, and we know they are all um, medicinal, herbal flowers, so they have effect on our body. And in some cases, terpenes are even more powerful than cannabinoids. Depends which problem are you solving. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any question that I can answer to it, you can ask. Uh, we are on stand 407, so maybe we can talk also in person if you have something more to ask. Okay, thank you. Oh. I want to ask a question about the roots. Because yes. I Uh, yes, currently we are not using the roots yet, but uh, as I read about uh, studies, it has also great medicinal effect on pain and arthritis. It has different ratio of active ingredients. So, um, yeah, I cannot tell you with, on practice because we didn't uh, start with this yet. And also, it's a different segment. So, yeah, it needs more researching on that. Yeah, it's ways to just put them away. <laughs> yeah. Thank you.